In spring of 74 in Orlando, you win your first singles title. I read where you hugged a light pole. Yeah. And, and it's, you know, it that's weird. It sounds weird <laughs> and it makes people laugh a little bit, but it's profoundly sad to me because you didn't really have anybody no. to hug. I was, yeah, yeah, that's the pole. I was right next to the umpire's chair and, you know, I wasn't gonna hug the umpire. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, I won the tournament. I was the Virginia Slims of Orlando and uh, won $10,000, which went to the Federation. Uh, but uh, I, I was just so happy. I wanted to hug somebody, and I was looking, and everybody was sitting down. I think if somebody was there standing up, I would have hugged them, even told a stranger. But there was nobody near me, so I just hugged the pole. How does that make you feel? Well, that... sad, because I was alone then, because there were no other players. Uh, some tournaments, uh, there would be other Czech players, but most of the time I was by myself. And, uh, and then when I finally started making it, I could have had my parents travel with me. I had the money for it, but they were not allowed to leave. So I was still alone. I want to I go so, through. Ugh, I, I had a tough life, Jesus. <laughs> no, I mean, seriously, I, I, I don't mean to be glib, but I, I didn't realize how alone I was even when I wasn't alone. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, at some point, you make the decision to defect. And, mm. and I can't imagine what that process is like mentally, emotionally, to leave everyone behind. Right. Can, can you describe to somebody who's never been through something like that what that process and, and what's, what, what clicks where you go, okay, that's it? Well, it's, it's hard to imagine that now because we're so far removed from it that it's, it's almost hard to think that that's how it used to be, but that this is what it was and we didn't know any different. So again, you have to get the visa to get out of the country. And actually in 75, I played Wimbledon and my parent, my family came. The whole family was out of the country at the same time. We could have defected then. Looking back, I think I wish we had because uh, we would have had the family together because it was after that when I got back uh, that summer that the Federation said, oh, we're not gonna let you go play the US Open, which is you know two months later. and. Uh, and I thought, well, if they don't let me, if don't, you know, I don't have a choice. I, you know, if you don't get the visa, you don't go. You can't go against the Federation's wish wishes. So finally, a week before, they said, okay, we'll let you go. Uh, Jan Kodesh, who was the top Czech tennis player and a good friend, um, talked to the Federation and, 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 and said, you know, please let her, let her go. She's one of the top players in the world. You have to let her go. So they did, and it was at that time, at that moment, that I knew I wouldn't come back because I couldn't live with not knowing what, if I get to go out again. But you know the other side of it, yeah. which is once you make that decision... It's a one-way ticket. There's no going back. Right. And once you make that decision, your mom and dad are left behind. Right. Yeah. Did you tell your mom when you left no. for the U.S. Open you were going to defect? No, and, and that's just when I always cry, but I'm not going to cry this time because it's a very long interview. Uh, but uh, I, I knew I wasn't going to go back. I talked to my dad, and he said, if you don't, go, if you don't come back, uh, don't, don't, when you call, when you call, don't tell your mom. And, uh, and when you call us, don't believe us if we say come back because they're making us say that. So it was kind of planned ahead, but... Uh, I wasn't 100% sure I would do it, but like 99 when I left. But, you know, if, if, you, if I knew 100%, I don't know if I would have had the guts to do it. But it was kind of easier three weeks later to just say I can't deal with this. Uh, but it still obviously was very difficult and, uh, you know, broke my mom's heart. Did, did it, I guess, feel like kind of a betrayal that you weren't totally honest with her? No. Why does it, why does it make you that emotional other than the obvious reasons when you say it broke your mom's heart because you were just leaving her behind? I wasn't going to cry. <sighs> you do this to everybody though, don't you? I'm going to call you Barbara Walters from yeah. now on. <laughs> just refer Barbara to me as Barbara. Walters. Barbara Buck. Barbara, Barbara Walters, I don't think she made me cry as much as you are making me cry. We don't have to get emotional if you don't want to. Um, I can't imagine how distracted you were at the 75 U.S. Open. I mean, how do you, mm. and you're going to face Chris Everett. Right. How, how in the world do you physically perform when you're, you know, emotionally just chained up? 
I wasn't thinking about it during the match, so it wasn't anything, you know, on the back of my mind that much. I just wanted to do as well as possible. But by then, the, the U.S. Open was played on clay, and Chris was the queen of clay, so she wiped wiped me off the court. And uh, and then uh, I think the next, it was either that day or the next day that I went to the to the INS uh, office in Manhattan. And you declare that you are defecting. They, they said, come after hours because I don't want, we don't want anybody to see Martina here because we want to keep it quiet. And the next morning, the phone rings at like 8 o'clock and I answer, I was sound asleep because I had a late night. And, uh, and, and it's Vera, she says, why did you do it? I said, did what? I had no idea what she was talking about. And she says, why did you do it? And I'm like, oh my God, she knows. How do you know? She said, what's well, in the Washington Post? And, uh, and then all hell broke loose. And, I, you know, again, I was, well, now I'm really alone because I can't really talk to my coach. I had to kind of be spirited away. So when you, I guess the comment that came out of Czechoslovakia was, and this is kind of like a, yeah, no kidding, was that, well, she just wants to be a pro and she wants a fat bank account. Yep. The, that was that, that that's was what their they said. Summary. I I I uh, betrayed my motherland and uh, wasn't grateful enough for what it had given me, and uh, and I just went after the money. Yeah, it was all about money for me, and I was never gonna amount to anything because I was so greedy. I was a greedy capitalist now. So yeah, they were right.